I sell oranges now in Zambia. Mm. I travel across the border every day to Livingston. I sell what I can, and then I bring back food across. My parents are dead. <clears throat> so I, I take care of my brothers and sisters, as well as my own children. A lot of hungry mouths. Maybe one day you'll write a book about all of this. It would be nice to have that freedom. I had hopes and dreams once in life. I was going to be the one to expose all the corruption, the violence, the injustice. I was going to make the world care because of what I wrote and how I wrote it. I just didn't want all this to be taken for granted. All this madness. How anyone, how anyone could do this to a country, a people. But that was eight years ago. Now not only have they gotten away with it, they've stopped anybody from speaking out. I never thought it would get this bad. And you know what? For someone who only ever wanted to tell the truth, I feel as if I've spent more time in jail than most violent criminals. And why didn't you just write what they wanted you to write? I can just write papers. At least you would have been safe and they would have paid you well enough. But like you, I would rather starve. If I write lies that I don't believe, I, I die anyway, just from the inside. I can't write about the two-mile queue for a loaf of bread that costs more than a day's wages. Or about our young people who are dying from AIDS because they receive no drugs, or because of government policy. No. Those are the kind of stories that a journalist must write. Those that are true to the profession anyway. But those are the kind of stories that newspapers cannot touch now. Hmm. So the truth is never exposed, and nobody helps. I think it is even worse than that. Hmm? Nobody cares. At least not enough. People are less important than politics now.
touch other lives. What difference it makes. Every life has to mean something, right? What about Mary's baby's life? That didn't get a chance to make a difference. Mm -hmm. But it did. Don't you see? It got us talking for a start. And who knows how this conversation has changed us? What we might go on and do because of it? Maybe so. It's strange, isn't it? How we are each born into a particular place and time without a choice. And then after, there is nothing but choices. Let me ask you, Constance. If you had a choice, where you were born, I mean, where would you have opted for? It would always be Zimbabwe. I am proud to be Zimbabwe. It just shouldn't be like this. I know. Believe me, I know. This is your place now, where your life will make a difference. Think of the most enormous revolution you can imagine. Look harder and you will see. It is made up of billions of tiny, tiny changes. It will come. We just have to do what we can. And be patient. Troublemakers, you're free to go. Go on. Mary, Move. Mary, come. Come on. Move. Oh. A bit slow to arrive now. <laughs> Mary, it's okay now. We Hurry up. Go. Come on. We will take you to your. Come on. I've warned you before. You must respect me. Leave her, you understand. We've been through enough. We don't deserve this. 